Joining us live now is the AEC Commissioner, Tom Rogers. Commissioner, appreciate your time. Thank you. So when will that pamphlet be sent Thank out to people? Know. And will the AEC tinker with it at all? Or are you just sending on whatever the politicians provide you with? We want to be very clear about this one, Ash, that uh, our role here is absolutely as a post box. So whatever the argument is that we're given, we will be sending that out to citizens unedited. It's very important. We're not going to make any decisions. So even spelling errors, grammatical errors, um, as long as it's the 2,000 words for yes and no, we'll be taking that, typesetting it, and then sending it to every household in Australia. It's a huge task, but, Tom, um, but we're already starting on that process. Tom, what if you deem, though, that some arguments submitted by one side has misinformation in it or is factually incorrect? Do you have a chance to issue a please explain to the politicians and get them to reword it or do you actually have to just be a post box and, and send it out as is? Ash, we're absolutely a post box. Now, I'm assuming that given that these are senior parliamentarians, that that won't be an issue in any case. But even if it is, uh, that's a matter for them, not for us. We'll be taking that argument and putting it into the booklet and sending that out. And that's critical because if we made a decision about one of the cases, it could bring our neutrality into question in any case. So it's a very clear process for us. Gosh, assuming uh, factual correctness from our politicians might be a big assumption. We, um, we hope you don't have to uh, question anything, as you say. Neutrality, very important. The Prime Minister said today that the date of the referendum could be between October to December. Most people seem to think it's going to be October. What date are you working towards being ready for? Are there any certain events on the calendar that really narrow down when the vote can actually be held from your perspective? I'm very, very conscious, Ash, not to double-guess the Prime Minister. Uh, in those matters, we are ready whenever we are told to run the referendum, we'll be doing it. I'm very aware of the commentary about when it's likely to be, um, and we are simply waiting. We're planning for all possible scenarios, and I know we'll be ready, and we'll be running a safe event with high integrity, as we always do. What sort of turnout are you expecting? A big turnout. I think that, um, you know, there's been a lot of publicity about this particular event. I know that there's a lot of online commentary, a lot of media commentary. Whenever there is a lot of commentary, it does remind people of their obligations to turn out and vote. I just remind everyone that it's compulsory to vote in a referendum. And so we're expecting a big turnout as well. How's it going to work in terms of the, the pre-poll process? How long a period will people have to vote in the lead up to referendum day? Uh, the referendum will look very much like an election. There'll be the same sorts of things that we do from uh, mobile polling, aged care facilities, there'll be the overseas vote, um, postal votes. The pre-poll period will be about two, will be a two week period, I should say, except in remote areas where that will be a three week period. Uh, we're already doing our planning for that. But citizens can expect to see the sorts of things they see at election time with the same sorts of polling places and the same sorts of process uh, that people are broadly comfortable with. And what's the budget? How much is this referendum costing us? Uh, that is something I'm not talking about at the moment, Ash. It's almost impossible for me to guess a figure until after we've done it. But given it looks and feels like an election, it will cost uh, within the broad ambit of an election. And so how much does an election cost you generally? Well, the last election was around the 400 mil mark, um, and that's kind of the figure for a, a broad election in a country as large as Australia. But again, I'm just I'm being very conscious when I say something like that, Ash, I'm then I'm then held to that. And until we've run the event, it's very difficult to know how much it's going to cost. So I, I'm leaving that a little open at the moment. Could be less, could be slightly more. And so, Tom, just just clarify that for us, because I mean, all organisations have to, to run to a budget. Um, surely you do, too. Why do you actually have to wait until the actual referendum to know how much it costs? What's the, the different inputs mm. that you're looking at? We've got a broad idea, but because we use so many different services and contractors, sometimes it takes an extraordinary amount of time for invoices to come in from a range of suppliers. So it takes us a while to know what the exact costs are. We're working to a broad budget, but then there are things that occur at last minutes. If there is a flood, for example, and we have to spend extra money uh, getting uh, the vote out to various areas. We're looking at postal price increases that can occur very close to an event. So. Yes, there's a broad budget, but we're also conscious of things that can occur that impact on that budget along the way. Okay, you said you're looking forward to a high turnout. 
Do you have a, mm. a, a percentage figure that you're expecting in terms of that? And have you seen a big boost in enrolments this year, especially among Indigenous Australians? Mm. Well, let me deal with the enrolment uh, question first, because it's a great question. The electoral roll is in the best shape it's ever been since Federation. It's currently sitting at about 97.3% or thereabouts, which is a fantastic result. Uh, and, and more Australians on the roll than there's ever been in Australia's history. Now, the Indigenous role, uh, traditionally Indigenous Australians have been underrepresented on the electoral roll, um, but the, our estimate is that the Indigenous level of enrolment is also the best it's been since Federation, currently sitting um, at about 85% uh, or thereabouts, um, and we're expecting that to grow further uh, before the event. So great enrolment figures for the overall role and for the Indigenous role. Also, youth uh, looking pretty good as well. One of the highest youth enrolment figures we've ever had. So that's great. Um, uh, oddly, uh, the higher the role, sometimes that has a perverse impact on turnout. Um, it can actually depress turnout, but we're expecting a big turnout for this event. I couldn't give you an estimate. Um, but I, I do think, given the amount of media that's been focused on this and the amount of community commentary, that there will be a large turnout, Ash. I assume that you're looking at disinformation, misinformation uh, pretty closely in relation to the referendum. Uh, how much have we seen of that? Are you worried that it will only intensify as we get closer to the vote? Do you see this as a real challenge? Mm. So just to be very clear about mis- and disinformation, our real focus on that regard is about the voting process itself. So we don't get involved in arguments, even at election time, about whether somebody says a campaign slogan that's correct or not correct. That's a matter for those, uh, for, the, for the yes and the no campaigners. Um, any electoral event and a referendum is a contest of ideas. It's not our role to censor that at all. But what we do care about is mis- and disinformation about the electoral process. So if, if somebody said, for example, it's not compulsory to vote, we take that very seriously, we deal with that. We have an online disinformation register where we list items of disinformation about the electoral process. We're running a national campaign called Stop and Consider, where we're asking citizens to think about the source of information. And we continue to work with people so that they don't spread false messages about the electoral process. We are seeing uh, an increase, Ash, in what I would call mm, robust commentary online of the sort we haven't necessarily seen previously or to the extent we are slightly worried by that, but we're doing as much as we can to keep the debate civil online, particularly the bits that we're doing and making sure that we deal with misinformation and disinformation about the process. Commissioner, as you know, the AEC's own ad that began run, running, I think, last month was heavily criticised as favouring the Yes campaign. The purpose of that ad, as I understand it, was to boost enrolments. Have you gone back and had a look at it? Are you going to rejig it? Is it still running? Do you think it's balanced? Uh, yes, there was uh, an amount of commentary about that, Ash, to be very clear, in certain sections uh, of the commentariat. I have had a look at that ad, and it's a good ad. Uh, not only that, out of interest, um, that ad with that slogan has been running for over a decade. The particular ad campaign you're talking about was actually funded by the last government. Uh, and has been running for an extended period of time. Um, it is designed to focus on the traditional underrepresentation of Indigenous Australians on the electoral roll. Uh, and even as early as late as February this year, there was a bipartisan report out of Parliament asking the AEC to focus on the area of Indigenous enrolment. So this campaign was aimed at those Indigenous communities to boost enrolment, has been a long-standing issue. I'm entirely comfortable with that campaign. Um, it's going to cease during the referendum process itself. Um, so I'm, I'm entirely comfortable with that. Um, just very quickly, Tom Rogers, one final question for you. Once we're all voted, how long are you going to keep us hanging? How long do you expect it will take us yeah. to have a final result? Ash, that's a great question. I, I, I We get that pressure all the time. Um, I, I would just point out that if it's an overwhelming result, either way, either yes or no, or no or yes, just to deal with the conspiracy theories about that, um, then we will know very early. But if it comes down to a tight margin, we will have to wait for postal votes to return. That's a 13-day period after election day, and we may have to wait for that entire period. Sometimes uh, people indicate that I'm deliberately withholding results or I'm choosing not to count votes. We count pretty much every vote we've got on the days that we are legally authorised to count them. 
But if it's a close result, we do have to wait for those postal votes to come back. And that may be determinative for this event. AEC Commissioner Tom Rogers, always appreciate you making the time for us and spelling all of that out. Thanks so much. Thanks very much, Andrew.